I had to, so for our science following on from yesterday, we're still going to be looking at living and non-living things. I'm going to be looking at dependency and micro habitats today. But to warm us up, just a bit of a game, you've got this sheet in your work pack. So I want you to pause the video and jot down what's the same, what is different. So you've got the North Pole as a habitat and you've got a log, which you can see lots of plants a moss growing in there so what's the same what's different just jot some notes down okay all right hopefully you've got a few ideas written down you've paused the video so you could say the same as the both habitats the different one is full of snow one is full of moss different you have a vast a huge habitat you have a small habitat within a habitat because this would be in a woodland this one wouldn't it the same as they both have living things there. Different, they have animals that have adapted to live in really cold conditions. These plants and insects and animals probably live in warmer conditions. So there's lots and lots. There's no right or wrong. Okay, so let's have a look at our learning objective. So we're looking quickly at micro habitats. So we've been learning about different habitats where living things make their homes. Some of these habitats are very big, like woodland. Some habitats are very small. And that's the micro habitat. A large habitat contains many micro habitats. A micro habitat can be as small as a fallen branch or the space under a stone. So I've not had time to fit everything in, but if you wanted to go on another little walk, you could go and find lots of micro habitats. Under stones, in sharp grass, inside rotting wood, under fallen leaves, in and, in and on the soil in tall grass and flowers. So you might see lots of mini beasts like snails, bees, wasps, okay? We have world habitats, this is important for you to know. Do you remember how plants and animals rely on the environment to run them to provide them with everything they need? This means they have to live somewhere that has the right conditions to help them stay alive and well. Because different places around the world have different conditions, the plants and animals that live there are different too. These different animals and plants all have special ways to survive in their special habitat. So we have rainforest, arctic, ocean, desert. These are the ones last time we looked at British habitats. Now we're looking all over the world. We have oceans, many kinds of plants grow in the oceans. There are more than 21,000 species of fish. Fish breathe, and we know that, don't we, using their special gills. Many mammals live in the sea, such as seals, whales, and dolphins. They return to the surface to breathe air like we do. And some creatures crawl on the bottom of the ocean. They include lobsters, crabs, prawns, and starfish. And we've got the Arctic. The Arctic Circle is located at the very top of the Earth, and it's very cold all the time. The only plants that can grow in the Arctic are grass and mosses. Trees are unable to grow because the ground stays frozen. So they wouldn't be able to get the nutrients up there. There are many land mammals in the Arctic, including ox, reindeer, Arctic foxes, weasels, wolves, polar bears. Seals, walruses and whales live here and feed from plankton and fish in the sea. We have tropical rainforests. The home to gigantic trees and millions of bright insects and birds and mammals. There are more trees in the tropical rainforest than anywhere else in the world. Most of them have high branches where they can find food. So lots of the animals that live here have adapted over lots and lots of time to be able to get high in the trees so they can get the food they need. Insects, small birds and frogs feed on the fruit seeds and leaves or other small creatures. Tree living lizards, chameleons, and snakes feed on small animals. Plant eating mammals such as flying squirrels, monkeys, and sloths live in the forest canopy. You can see some animals at the rainforest there. If you want to have a go at doing a little project, a little non quam report on this, you can go wherever you want with this. I'm just giving you the basics, and you can take this wherever you want if you want to do something extra at home, your little project. So we have deserts because there's so little, such little water in a desert. Not many things live and survive here. Animals and plants that live here are specially adapted to the harsh conditions. Some animals like kangaroos and lizards live in burrows which don't get too hot or cold and have damp air inside. 
Camels can drink large amounts of water at one time and can survive as long as two weeks are there to drink. They have large spread out feet that help them walk in the soft sand. So that's how they've adapted. And there's some animals in the desert. Okay, so we've looked at different habitats around the world. We've looked at micro habitats. Let's just have a little look at this clip. Really quickly, because your main work today is looking at dependency. You've got quite a few sheets. Please don't feel like you need to do them all. You can just pick one or two to do. I've just put them all in so you can see the difference. So we're looking at dependency. Your sheets look like this that are in your pack. Okay. And you've got some labels at the bottom. You need to cut the labels out and stick them on the right place in the sheet, okay? So I'll tell you what dependency is because it's a new word. It says living things in a habitat depend on each other. This means they need each other to stay alive. Squirrels and oak trees are part of a woodland habitat. Why might this squirrel need an oak tree to stay alive? So acorns are the squirrel's favorite food. Living high in an oak tree gives squirrels protection from foxes and badgers and gives them a space, safe place to have babies. It's a shelter the oak tree protects the squirrel from the wind, cold and rain and bigger animals. Why does the oak tree need a squirrel? Never thought a tree would need a squirrel before. The oak tree needs the squirrel to spread its seeds so it needs to eat it and then poo it out somewhere else so another oak tree can grow. The squirrel collects lots of acorns and buries some and saves them for later. Carries them away far away in the tree and hides them under the ground away from other animals. Sometimes the squirrel forgets to go and dig them up again. These acorns grow into new oak trees. The squirrel needs the oak tree for food and shelter. The oak tree needs the squirrel to spread its seeds so new, seeds can, new trees can grow. The oak tree and the squirrel depend on each other. So that's our, what we're looking at. We can't have one without the other and it leads really nicely onto our lesson tomorrow on food chains. Everything in, the, in a habitat relies on the next thing. Why do foxes need squirrels? Well, foxes eat squirrels. Why do foxes need oak trees? If there were no oak trees, there would be fewer squirrels, so there would be less food for the foxes. So they all link in, don't they? <coughs> if there were no foxes, there would be more squirrels. The squirrels might eat all the acorns, and then no new oak trees would grow. All of the living things in this habitat depend on each other to survive. They all need one another. Okay? 
So that's where your task comes in today. As always, you can take a picture and upload to Seesaw, or you can hand it in with your pack and enjoy your science.